So Marcus Fish is a Conservative Party person, or I guess ex-Conservative Party person who lost his seat at the election and has left the Conservative Party forever, thinks they will never win again, and said the whole thing should be dissolved. It was far master it lasted. And now, whilst I certainly agree with his sentiments, I don't necessarily agree with his reasoning for this. Now, this MP did an interview on Times Radio the other day. I've seen some clips, and the bits that I saw really have to be seen to be believed. So whilst we're looking at some, some conservative cope over their failure at the general election, let's watch Marcus Fish on Times Radio talk about why he thinks the Conservative Party failed. Well, let's now hear from a former Conservative MP who lost his seat in this election and has now quit the party, saying it's dead. Marcus Fish was defeated in Yeovil by the Liberal Democrats, and he joins us now. Uh, good morning, Marcus. Good morning. Hi. What makes you say that the party is dead? I just don't think it's a viable um, entity anymore. I think it's um, with the current composition or the new composition of the party in Parliament, I don't think there is any chance that it will do the things that are required to actually be electable again. So um, whether it's make, making the most of actually being outside the EU, I don't think um, the current crop of MPs will ever want to do that. And I don't think it's possible for a centre-right party uh, that doesn't want to do that ever to be elected in the UK again. So I just think everyone's wasting their time mm. with it. And I, I'm just calling it how it I see it really if it was my business I would wind it up yeah I honestly don't think it's viable I don't think it's um I just don't think it works anymore I don't think there's political space for where the current crop of MPs want to be which is on the uh center left S SDP side of politics the old SDP yeah true when when, when I look at people like Kemi Badenoch when I look at people like Suella Braverman when I look at people like Rishi Sunak, when I look at people like Marc Francois, the only thing that I can think of is, yeah, this is like the SDP. This is a centre-left government. And this doesn't make any sense. Like the current composition of the party, you already booted out the guy who dragged you back to the centre ground in terms of macroeconomic policy, which was Boris Johnson. And you then did austerity after people voted for an end to austerity. And you think that you didn't go hard enough in being right wing. You think that the austerity politics of Hunt and Sunak is somehow centre-left SDP. Incredible. They are centre-left politicians, and that's where Labour is. So you're um, suggesting a move to the right is what the Conservative Party needs? No, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that it needs to occupy that space, which is the centre-right and the centre, in a sensible way that is going to resonate with the population and speak human to them and be human about it. And that's not what reform is. And I don't think that that is capable of doing that. Mm. But I don't think the, conserv the current Conservative MPs want to be there. That isn't... The thing is, well, the actual kind of centre ground that the Conservatives stood on was Harold Macmillan. Harold Macmillan was the last centrist Conservative leader, the person who thought we needed to have a mixed economy with, you know, at least some kind of equality between capital and labour, with reasonable taxation to stop a rentier economy and a reasonable welfare state to stop people going into destitution. That was the centre ground conservatism. He described the bargain basement neoliberal hellscape that you created as selling off the family silver. Are you, like, how can you call yourself a conservative when you can't even conserve the water in our own rivers because you're happy to throw away the infrastructure of water companies to the private sector who won't invest in protecting these things? Rural constituents are abandoning you for people like the Green Party over the fact that you can't protect precious things, you cannot conserve precious things like our own rivers. And you're here saying, well, they weren't right wing enough, they were too centre left SDP. Do you think the SDP would have sold off the water companies? Are you insane, Marcus? Who they are. So it isn't a Conservative Party in that sense, and so it should no longer exist. So you won't be joining Reform UK? No, absolutely not. Okay. No. What key core message then was missing for you, Marcus, in this election campaign? That what, what were voters not hearing from the Conservatives as far as you're concerned? Well, I think we need to look at the result and realise that uh, most of our voters from 2019 either stayed at home or voted for reform. Um, they, I think, rightly recognise that it's not a party that will um, actually do what they need it to do. It won't actually um, pursue conservative policies of lower taxes and incentivising business and growing the economy the way that 
The people that you lost from 2019 wanted interventionist policy. They voted for Boris Johnson. He said he would level up their communities. That's what all of the Reform UK gains have been. In northern constituencies, out of the 2019 intake, for example, the 2019 people who lent their vote to Boris Johnson did so A, off of getting Brexit done, and B, off of levelling up and building 40 hospitals and a green industrial revolution. These are all things that they wanted. They didn't care about this like low tax agenda or incentivizing businesses to invest. They wanted the NHS to work. These are Labour heartlands that have been eaten into by the Boris Johnson part of the electorate. And they're abandoning you for Reform UK because at least they understand, right? There are plenty of things I disagree with Reform UK about in terms of a load of social issues, which I think they're absolutely rabidly far right on. But in terms of economic policy, at least they want to see infrastructure at least partly owned by the British state. You don't want to do that. Whereas you're sitting here telling me that these people are very happy with a destroyed NHS, are very happy with schools that have roofs that collapse. No, of course they aren't. You promised you'd fix these things. And then after you got rid of your elected leader, and installed somebody who nobody had chosen in Rishi Sunak. You did policies against all you promised in the manifesto. You were too right wing compared to your manifesto. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. And then, of course, you failed on migration as well, which is neither a left nor a right wing issue. The level of delusion. The level of delusion is crazy. Yeah, if we just destroy public services even more, maybe we'll get elected next time. That it should. Um, and it won't make the most of being outside of the EU. It, 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 isn't, um, it isn't that sort of party. It, it is run by the sort of re Remainers and Wets and, uh, you know, the sort of uh, Theresa May faction there is overwhelmingly large. And that's never going to... I mean, even the Wets thought that austerity was necessary. The only person really and truly who was an actual figurehead in the party to abandon austerity was Boris Johnson. It's the only person. You did austerity throughout the entirety of the period when the ideologues were in charge from George Osborne's side, when the Wets were in charge during Theresa May's period, and when Jeremy Hunt was Chancellor. Even the Wet Tories are massively pro-austerity. The only person who actually differed on that policy was Boris Johnson. That's it. And these were the voters that you won over in 2019 that you're now never going to get back. Ever. Ever. ...going to do that job uh, which the people of the UK require it to do. Um, and so I just don't think it's viable anymore. Right. So there's, there's no point being involved in it. And can I just confirm, so you posted on X last night, I hereby resign from the Conservatives. Have you have you literally handed in a resignation? Are you withdrawn your membership, all that sort of stuff? Uh, I, I haven't formally done that yet, but I will be doing doing that today, yeah. But wow. that's, that's yeah, that isn't really of that much of a consequence uh, to anything, but it is, uh, I just think I need to call it how I see it. And I think it's, it's a real problem for uh, colleagues who are uh, still in Parliament, what they actually do is very tricky now um and i think they they need to think very long and hard unless they are willing to actually be a conservative party and realize that um the rishi sunak approach wasn't the right one and admit that it wasn't the right one then I don't see a future for it at all. So you're also saying there, Marcus, that when you look around at the, well, 121 Conservative MPs who have been returned after this election, that you do not see a viable leader of this Conservative Party among them either, despite the names with which we're all familiar as potential candidates, whether they are Kemi Badenoch or Suella Braverman or Prissy Patel or Tom Tugendhat, these sorts of people, none of these people, as far as you're concerned, can lead the Conservative Party to where you think it should be. No, I don't think so. I don't think they would. I don't think, um, I don't think, uh, I think only one of them would in fact be elected by the, uh, by the MPs. Um, and um, while he's a good guy, I don't think he would put the party in that position that needs, it needs to be in to win. Um, because his MPs simply wouldn't back him to do that. What, what has caused this? Where has this gone wrong? Is it under the leadership of a specific person? Is it and on top of this, it's a silly electoral strategy. What he's essentially saying is we need to chase after the Reform UK's voter base. And I'm like, well, that's going to be an ever-shrinking sector of the electorate. They're all going to be splitting between two parties. The Reina types, sorry. The, the classical conservative types are all backing reform. The liberal, like, free market type conservatives with a little bit of a conscience are backing the Liberal Democrats. And the swing voters are all backing... Labour, if you try and chase after the voters you've lost to reform, you're just going to push yourself further away from all the voters that you've lost to the Liberal Democrats and to the Labour Party. This is a loser's game.
you've you've lost five seats to reform uk and you've lost hundreds of seats hundreds and hundreds of seats to liberal democrats and labor and you're going after a tiny cohort this is delusion it's complete delusion i think all of the conservative party policy is going to be shit but at least i understand like the electoral strategy for going after 15 percent of the voter base is ridiculous it's ridiculous or if we go for this tiny sector of the electorate, then maybe we'll win an absolute majority in the House of Commons. Absolutely nonsensical. Nonsensical. Self-interest. What would you identify as the root causes of the problems you're identifying? Well, I think that's an interesting question. For me, um, I would have liked to see David Cameron stay on as Prime Minister and uh, pursue uh, proper independence from the EU. He sort of uh, didn't do that, and that was the root cause of the problem, which is why we ended up with Theresa May, who didn't know what to do with it, and frankly just took the advice of Ollie Robbins, who it sounds is now like like is now going to be back in charge any minute. Um, but uh, so that and that was the fatal flaw. The fatal flaw was what was not making a proper job of that and so we wasted so much energy and expended so much energy arguing about that for for years um and frankly um rishi sunak has just been a return to that approach uh, he solved the problem he's been the only prime minister to solve the brexit problem with the windsor framework every single other prime minister either left or resigned or made a mess of brexit negotiations the only person who's come out of the negotiations with anything resembling a workable solution is rishi sunak what the hell is he talking about this is this is the other side of the coin from the hashtag FPPE crowd is the other side of the coin. The Brexiteers who are obsessed, totally obsessed with all of the opportunities of Brexit that were never actually going to be realised and are making it shape their politics eight years, eight years since we actually had the referendum. It's still central to how he believes politics should be done. Just Brexit, Brexit, Brexit. Change the fucking record. Um, and that's why it's been a disaster. And. The MPs, I'm afraid, who put him there are to blame as well because they they wouldn't have any other approach and they will now not have any other approach and that's going to make it totally unelectable forever. So I think it's only until that entity gets replaced by something that is more, more credible and is going to actually be voted in by a, a unified centre right of the country, um, that's, that is the only thing that can happen now so the sooner it's put out of its misery the better and I, that i think is what needs to happen wow. i would i i would actually dissolve the uh, corporate entity of the party and i would start again with a new with a new brand a new leader and a new everything yeah but they're already all elected. The, the, the caucus of MPs who you state as being the core issue because they wouldn't elect a leader that would get Brexit done but the, the way you wanted it done, right, very slightly different to the Windsor Framework or whatever. Conservatives to Electric Boogaloo. That would still have all of the same MPs as part of the caucus. They've all been elected. Do you want them all to step down and just have all a load of them as by-elections? So all that would do would allow Labour to win even more seats. Join with reform? You don't like reform either. All of the problems are not going to get solved by just rebranding the Conservative Party if you genuinely believe, from your own statements you've just said here, that the membership that are in Parliament at the moment are the problem. May I put this text to you, uh, Mr Fish, and we're very grateful for you speaking to us this morning because I can hear the kind of frustration and I suppose the exhaustion, actually, in, in your voice. Uh, Craig, who's listening to you, texts to say, just because Marcus Fish can't play, he wants the house burnt down. He's being petulant. No, not at all. No, this is just about facing reality. The one thing that you need to do in life is understand what, what is actually happening around you. And that is my very uh, sober assessment of it, that it is just it just isn't a viable entity anymore because it doesn't want to occupy the space that is electable in the centre right. Um that is the reality of having left the EU, is that we have to make the most of being outside of the EU, which means using the powers, using the independence. And the majority of those Tory MPs don't want to do that. They just simply don't. And so... I mean, most people just want to rejoin the EU and the UK. When you poll people, they actually would rather be in the European Union now. Again, I'm ambivalent. There are pros and cons. But you're saying, well, people want a closer relationship with the EU, but that's bad because that's not what the benefits of Brexit would be. Yeah, of course, he doesn't say what these benefits of Brexit would be. I can tell you benefits of Brexit. I can tell you some right now. Monetary financing of government deficits. Be able to undermine competition laws. Be protectionist in our trade agreements. Try and rebuild Britain with an industrial strategy that 
puts money and keeps money in communities rather than allowing mega corporations to take it offshore across free trade barriers. Those are things that might be benefits of Brexit, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't mean make the state bigger. He's already called the Conservatives as being like the SDP, despite them giving us hard Brexit. That's why it isn't ever going to get itself into that position. Uh, just finally, I must ask about your exchange with Nicholas Soames, uh, 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 something of a Conservative grandee, I think it's fair to say, uh, on Twitter this is, in response to your message saying, it's dead, move on, let's do something else. Nicholas Soames said, I really don't think anyone will notice a, the total idiot in reference to you, to which you replied, mate, you are a total weapon. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, I rest my case. He's, he's someone who's traded on his grandfather's name his whole life, has nothing else to say for himself. So Fight, 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 fight. I must say, right, I'm not particularly happy with the current state of the Labour Party. You know me, I've talked about how bad I think the Labour Party are. I told people not to vote for them because they'd be progressives in urban constituencies who will be voting green anyway, and they won regardless. But if there's one thing that you can take away from the Labour majority that's in the Commons right now, there's one thing that you can take away. It's the, the feasting, the copium, the internal catfight that the Conservative Party are going to get is going to make for some excellent content over the next year and a half. It's going to be very, very funny to watch these people tear seven shades of shit out of each other. And I'm all for it. There's one thing I hate, is the Conservative Party and every single member and everything they stand for. So watching them get mad and create a circular firing squad, I'm about that. I'm about hey, that. If you enjoyed the video, make sure that you like and leave a comment that helps the video out in the algorithm. If you subscribe and ring the bell, it'll let you know when I go live. I stream every day on YouTube and Twitch. You can also follow all of my socials down in the description. And if you want to support me in a more financial manner, there's a join button for membership to just 99p to be a member on YouTube, as well as a patron. And there's some merch there as well. And hopefully I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.